All righty, here we go. We got a huge show today. I'm excited because we are playing another game in just two days. I can't believe it. But we're going to talk about the game against Wyoming, of course, something we've been anticipating for a long time. But we're also going to talk about Fresno just a little bit. And we're going to go back and check out my vlog that I did from the game because I was there. But first, let's bring in our friends on Facebook. And we welcome in our guest here in Facebook land. E como mai? Aloha hiahi kako. Welcome to another Wayne Kwaito show. We're going to talk even some Hawaiian words. E aloha mai. Let's talk some Hawaiian words. And the Hawaiian word we're going to talk about today is waiomina. Waiomina. What could that mean? So, you should think about that because uh, you probably know the meaning of it even if you don't speak Hawaiian. Uh, but while we are awaiting some of you to come in as uh, we welcome our Facebook friends in tonight. Yeehaw! We're going to talk about being a cowboy. Poke. We talked about the pokes uh, last time. A few uh, weeks ago on this show, we talked about uh, the last time I went to Wyoming, which was in 2017, I believe. Yeah, 2017. And um, one show I talked about that and how freezing cold it was and going with Fuchsia and my friend Eddie and um, just losing just by a razor thin margin in overtime to Josh Allen, who is now the quarterback of the Dallas of uh, the Dallas. Oh, my gosh. Was that a Freudian slip saying he's a Dallas quarterback? That's so weird. I don't know why I said that, but Josh Allen is obviously the Buffalo Bills quarterback. So that's so strange that I said that. But. Buffalo, Wyoming, Wyomina, that's the Hawaiian word, Wyomina. So I want you to think about that word because you probably know the meaning of it already because we're going to talk about Hawaii versus Wyomina, Wyoming. And uh, but before we go to that, I've teased this already a little bit on in the Twitter uh, realms, my vlog. I was there at um, Fresno at Bulldog Stadium so I got to be there to uh, see the Warriors play which is really exciting but also um, you know a lot of work it was a lot of hard work it's tons of work I mean I never worked that hard during a game ever just providing coverage but running back and forth you mean I mean I was providing uh, I did a halftime show I did a pregame show I did a postgame show I did video um, so I had a lot of equipment with me that I tagged along and I got to run around and I had the whole stadium to myself It was like a huge playground, which was really cool uh, But being there was just so surreal afterwards um, I reflected on this if you're my Facebook friend you would have seen I posted that video on Twitter about how um, you know just the experience of Being there, but not even just outside of the experience of being there, but just just having this game I mean it was so surreal and everything that was going on. So, with that being said, now, uh, with that being said, let's premiere uh, our first vlog. I don't even know what to call it. I'll just say Fresno Vlog Volume 1, Chapter 1, Hawaii Sports Fans. Let's check it out. Here we go. And hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to turn this my music down. I'm going to turn my mic down as well. Enjoy. What up, guys? I am here, Fresno State, Hawaii. The uh, parking lot behind me, clearly. No fans gonna be here in attendance at this game. I gotta wear my mask, that's the rules, we gotta distance. Only a few people here, maybe dozens of people outside of the teams. So we have to be a safe distance from the players, we can't just be right behind the players. We have to walk around. This is a very different atmosphere, I've never been to Bulldog Stadium when it's like this, when there's not crazy fans. Yeah, it's normally sold out, especially the Hawaii game. I mean, this is a game that, you know, that Fresno looks forward to every year as well, just like us. It's a big rivalry game. But we're in the end zone, you saw the fans behind us. We have some cardboard fans here. This one doesn't talk very much. But he looks very happy to be here. Excited to be here to support his Fresno State Bulldog. Our boys, they look ready. They look 
Uh, very intense. They look like they've been waiting to play this game for a long time. Fresno is equally as aggressive and hyped, so it's going to be a good game. It's about 77 degrees right now. We're going to have a little bit of sunshine, but nothing too bad. we got to find a good spot when our team comes out to be able to see them. Fresno State Bulldogs! Alright, you just saw the first score. Fresno State taking advantage of the turnover. So now 7-0, uh, already a hole for UA. Not a good way to start the game at all. So far, not so good for the team. 7-0 already. The game just started, but a fumble on the opening kickoff. And now the Bulldogs are up 7-0. All right, just got the fumble. That was huge. Got the fumble. So now, even on the turnovers, chance for UH to make up for that missed field goal. There you go. Big third down right here. Big third down. Very right, smart first down. First down, Hawaii. Cordero on read option scoring. Touchdown, Hawaii. Touchdown just there from Chevin Cordero. So now it's 7 7. I'm breathing so hard. These stairs are freaking long. Super long stairs. I keep going back down to like film and come back up. Oh, I'm breathing so hard. just got that field goal so now it's 10-7 7-12 left in the second quarter a uh, good way to come back for the bows It's halftime here in Fresno. The Bows are up 17 to 13. It's been a crazy game. They had some turnovers. We had all kinds of things going on here, but here we are. What a way to open this Mountain West season. Let's go second half. You see the artificial noise. Again. 24 to 16, so only one possession game in the third quarter. 341 left in the third quarter. It's getting dark. Four sixteen. The Bulls are up. Let's see if they can hold on to this lead. It's fourth quarter. The kick is good. adds a field goal. It's now 27-16. The Warriors. All the way left in the game. What's gonna happen? 
27-16, UH is up by two scores. 11 minutes left in the fourth, but they gotta do it here. Here we go, here we go, it's crunch time, let's go. Ten eighteen in the game, Fresno State head coach has a big decision to make right here, whether he's gonna go for it on fourth down. He's down by two scores, let's see if he sends his kicking Tim in, it looks like he is. So this is to bring it down to one score game right now. That's what Fresno's gonna try and do with the skill goal. And the kick is good. And the team remaining, the Warriors 27, Turner with the direct snap again. He's got, he sees the end zone, he's in there. It's a touchdown. It is a touchdown for Hawaii. 34-19, 34-19, Hawaii up on the Bulldogs. I'm sitting with all my Bulldog friends over here though. They still seem kind of happy. They don't seem that upset by the score, but it's 34-19, 2.58 left. Let's see if Fresno can make a comeback right here. Uh, this is a fun stadium to come to when you are a fan. I mean, if you're uh, playing the opposing team, it's not gonna be a uh, easy one. They're gonna definitely get on you, but today it's nice and quiet in here. And it's a cool place. That's it, that's the ball game. Hawaii wins, Hawaii wins, Hawaii wins. The Rainbow Warriors have won their first game of the season, 34 to 19. A pretty decisive win over their rivals, the Bulldogs. I wanna be the last person to leave at this point, but then again, there aren't that many people in this building. What a great game, all rushing touchdowns. When's the last time we saw that, right? Every, every touchdown was a rushing touchdown. What a game, what a game. Coach Graham getting his first win. Wow, what, a, what an offense, right? I love the speed, I love the tempo, I love the direct snaps, having Calvin take the ball direct. Yeah, I think it's called Warrior, because I heard them yelling Warrior. That's one thing too, you can hear things, like across the field, you can even hear them. From up here, I'm all the way at the top, and down there was a team, and I could hear them like going, good job, Elm, good job, like when he had a good block. So it's crazy to be in a stadium where, holy cow, I'm so breathing so hard. Oh gosh, I just walked all the way back up. Um, Calvin is going to be fun to watch this season. He's very versatile. We have some weapons. Obviously, look at Rico. We talked about him. He came in with the hype and he, he lived up to it. And uh, that's just that's just amazing. It's just to show how far this team has come. I finally made it to the top. Gee. Oh, I'm so tired. I'm so sweaty. So from Fresno, talk to you guys later. Aloha. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. Um, I'm just laughing because brother Cisco, his comment, sup brother Wayne, I bet Yamamoto Ohana, you were going to run on the field during the third quarter. <laughs> well, something in my nature to run on the field. I've never done it in a game before for sure. Um, or unless you're saying in the third quarter, you bet him that I would run on the field afterward. I'm not sure. But even so I was working that game and that's why this vlog, um, is unlike anything actually that I've done before because um, usually when I'm at the game, I'm just a fan, right? Um, I'm just there to enjoy the game like everyone else. And, um, you know, I, I'm just there to to just have a good time. And even playing media or being a media member or, you know, wearing my, my media credential and being able to bring, I, I thought I brought some excellent coverage. I think if you're following along with me, at uh, Fresno, you were at, uh, you saw a lot. I had a pregame, I had a halftime show, a postgame, and I had all of the, um, you know, the the scoring plays instantaneously. If you're on Twitter, if you're on Instagram or whatever social media, so that is the media side of it, and that's the part of me that's like the hard work. And I was just working, going up and down those steps, as you saw. I was totally sweating, but I definitely earned my points that day, earned my mileage, earned my steps. And hopefully burned a lot of calories along the way as well, which I probably did. Um, but that was a lot of fun in Fresno. Actually, I hung around a, a little while longer and um, got to go to Yosemite National Park. And, you know, it's a cool place, Fresno. So maybe one day I'll bring a Hawaii sports fans tour back there. Um, and we can uh, go back to Fresno and also check out Yosemite, which is not too far away. But the game, yes, it was so strange. As you saw, no fans in there um, trying to distance, seeing the team come out. Um, not hearing noise, right? Either way, usually if a team scores, um, you know, you hear some kind of celebration, right? Or booing or something. So <clears throat> and nothing could have prepared me, I would I would say for sure, 
just from what I experienced in that game right there, which was um, complete silence in a way that I had never really expected it or, or heard it before. It was almost deafening in, in terms of, um, you know, a college game and that atmosphere. But a ton of fun. Uh, Fresno, the, the weather was really perfect. It was a good time of day to start. It, 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 everything, just really the elements were really well. I thought the lighting was well, and that's why the video, I think the colors were really nice as well. But a fun vlog, something I you know, haven't really done before, but I'm going to do it again this coming week um, against Wyoming. So that was Fresno. Hawaii is 1-0. We're going to look forward to Wyoming. I'm actually not going to be um, a member of media for this game. Uh, and that's because um, due to COVID, and it's going to be so cold there in Wyoming, unlike in Fresno where you could, you know, you could... Uh, have the media spread out all across the whole stadium. I mean, I got everywhere in the stadium I wanted to go, I got to go when I was in Fresno. But when I was uh, uh, in Wyoming, where it's expected to be, I mean, right now, as we speak in Wyoming, it's in the teens. So it best not be in the teens two days from now because the game is going to uh, be about halftime at around this time in 48 hours. So um, apparently it is going to warm up to um maybe even 50 so as you know hawaiians and cold and i'm definitely one of those people as well that's not a huge into cold at all uh but you know wyoming is one of those places that's very unique place to play it's going to be the 25th time that these two teams meet and it's a rivalry uh in that there's a rivalry trophy that started um, being handed out in 1979 and this trophy uh, called the Paniolo Trophy, and Paniolo means cowboy. So, Auntie Penny, we're going to have some. If Auntie Penny, your coach's wife, uh, Penny Lee Graham, is out there, we'll have a, a few more vocabulary for her to um, to add to her and for everyone, right? We all, this is about practicing Olalo Hawaii and making sure that we are, um, you know, keeping our language alive. And through trophies like this, calling it Paniolo and being able for people to understand what those words mean, what that word means, and having it. Uh, a part of this trophy is something that's really cool and something that's very unique in itself as well. I mean, and so this trophy, this Paniolo trophy, was handed out um, from 1979. <clears throat> and then 1997, Wyoming left the WAC, so the teams didn't play each other anymore. And then Wyoming had the last trophy, and then they lost it. So, well, it, it's funny because if you read any, like, media or any kind of like press release regarding um the trophy it's all like it disappeared as if it like grew feet or grew i guess it's a cowboy and on a horse or, or was on a steer so or not a, yeah, whatever it was before because it changed and we're going to talk about that too so 1997 the trophy is gone finally the teams reunite in 2012 hawaii rejoins the mountain west in 2013 you know they're going to play each other for the first time again so the the trophy is brought back and we're going to talk about how this song has something to do with it as well. All right, that was weird. I couldn't get my mic, my mic, my mic back on. My mic, my mic. So I'm gonna blow your mind with some crazy um, Wayne Quito related trivia to that video, and why it's important. You might have heard that song before, the Baby Luau or something, or you had like some people playing at dinner while you were at Nico's or wherever. 
Uh, Wyomina is the name of that song. W a i o m i n a, and it. I don't know if there's a direct translation for it, but of course, it is a borrowed word like Wyoming. So Wyomina is Wyoming, and that song talks about this guy next to me, Ikua Purdy. And if you see um, that guy at the very end, so Jake Hensley is holding the trophy. So mahalo, Jake. He is not with us anymore at UH. Uh, the Hawaiian next to him, uh, Ikua Purdy, is actually the great, the, the grandson of the granddaughter of King Kamehameha. Um, and even more crazy, Wayne Koito related, I was saying Ikua Purdy. Purdy is the name, one of my friends. I believe that's his grandfather, great grandfather. And my other friend in that song, one of my very best friends, this song talks about uh, Ikua Purdy and another guy named Kaawa, Archie Kaawa. One of my very best friends, Dawson, that's his great-grandfather as well. And the, great, the part about uh, the story behind this song, and the song is about how the two of them are super famous because they went to Wyoming, um, Cheyenne, Wyoming, to the National Rodeo uh, competition. They went in 1907. These Hawaiians, and just imagine these brown boys coming from Hawaii and showing up in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and people think, who are these guys? Who do they think them? They're going to just, um, you know, they think they can just compete against us, right? And the next year, not only did they compete, but he won. Ikua Purdy won first place overall. Archie Kawa came in third place. Ikua Purdy, uh, he set a record by roping his steer in 56 seconds flat. So they said that in, in, in Wyoming, these cowboys... Uh, were an instant curiosity because they had uh, odd slouched hats and colorful hat bands, right? They were probably wearing these little accoutrements, uh, this, this flair that gave them that, that Hawaiian uh, look and uh, vaquero influence and tradition. Um, so something to be very proud of if you're a native Hawaiian. Also of Purdy and Ka'awa, um, friends of mine, I know they're very proud. I know Dawson and his great-grandfather, actually. Uh, so Parker Ranch, all of that, those are all in that line. Um, and uh, you guys, I'm sure, have heard of that on the Big Island. Um, so really cool story. But Ikua Purdy, uh, back to the Poniolo Trophy, Ikua Purdy is the um, subject or the model uh, or the statue of the new um, Poniolo Trophy. So the one that you see Jake Hensley holding above his head. Um, and that is something that's really cool. And, um, you know, a part of the trophy that I think is really important for people to, to hear. Um, Especially because those stories are super empowering, I think, for uh, Native Hawaiians and for people. You know, we hear stories about, um, you know, Native Hawaiians and Native people and how difficult it was to operate in a world that was, uh, you know, deemed them invisible sometimes. So to be able to go to Wyoming and to represent the Big Island, to represent Hawaii, um, it's amazing, and that's why Ikua Purdy was uh, inducted into the National Cowboy Museum in 1999. So, very cool story. Um, but the other part of the really weird uh, Wayne Cueto related thing of that video, Wayne Cueto related whatever that was to that video, um, the hula dancer Velo, who is the hula dancer, I got that, that, that uh, video off of YouTube. Um, and the hula dancer is also our classmate. So three of my classmates for somehow are uh, from Komehameha, of course. Not that you have to, you already see that. I got my confetti from the Kansas City game, by the way, right here. But um, my K, obviously. Wait. So three Komehameha classmates in the one. Oh, and there goes my letter. In one video. So that's really weird and strange. But I think that's really important for people to know because... Um, you know, Hawaii has a very rich history, cowboy history, right? You hear Ulupalakua or, or songs like that. But Wyomina is one of those that, that celebrates. So as Velo is dancing in there, you see her, um, the lariat, right? That's the, um, the rope. So you see her kind of do that. Um, but, uh, you know, it talks about how famous they are and how they went and they conquered in the stadium Kahua, uh, Kahua Wyomina, right? The Wyoming Stadium. That's pretty cool. So... It's been kind of, that's kind of a cool story. But in the same vein, uh, these Hawaiians, or the, the team representing Hawaii right now, the Hawaii uh, Rainbow Warriors, must go into Wyoming, into Wyomina, and battle a team that uh, has a pretty dangerous quarterback. Down for the Cowboys now. 
run, and he's in. Touchdown, Cowboys. That was a heck of a call. And Levi Williams just darted into the end zone. And you see the big guys getting up front, number 69, Erica Boje. That's a 240-pound quarterback. Yeah, that is a, I don't want to tie. If I'm a DB, I'm like, no, thank you. All right, so that guy's name is Levi Williams. He's clearly a force to be reckoned with. Looking at him, his size is like 6'4". Um, and do you know that UW offense this past week against uh, Nevada had 15 explosive plays for 279 yards. Ten of those plays, or, or nine of those plays, um, excuse me, were, were uh, pass plays of 10 yards or more. Nine pass plays of 10 yards or more. And and six pass play and six uh, running plays of ten yards or more. So that's really impressive. So this this offense has the ability um, to create havoc right away and to create a lot of um, you know mismatches for our defense or or um, you know a lot of um, catching them from surprise. So I know our coaches are are hard at work watching tape. As you know, our team is in Colorado. Uh, as you see, you, have, you see a picture of me on, on there as well. That was the last time I was there in, in Wyoming, as I talked about earlier. So 7,200 7, feet above um, sea level. So that's almost a mile and a half above uh, sea level, which is crazy. And, um, you know, that, that altitude is difficult to, to deal with. And thus, uh, such as the cold as well, very difficult to deal with in Wyoming. <clears throat> but so are the Wyoming players. Um, their running back, uh, Cezavian Valade, had four running plays of 10 yards or more on his own and two pass receptions of 15. So he is going to be somebody coming out of the backfield that they're going to have to watch. Um, they have another redshirt freshman wide receiver. I mean, these guys are all young too. Redshirt freshman quarterback, redshirt freshman receiver. And we know this redshirt quarter this quarterback, sorry, this redshirt freshman quarterback who had to come in, Levi Williams. He took over for the quarterback last week who started the game, who went down... Uh, with a uh, fibula so um, as we know it's gonna be difficult because not only are we you know we probably had prepared if we had done any Wyoming work before which we probably did we have to prepare for this another quarterback who did play last year and he did he did a uh, split time and so he is somebody that uh, has uh, a lot of ability already or, or, or a lot of experience anyways and, and ability to play so that's not something that we're gonna have to um, at least at Hawaii, we're going to have to be very careful about. But this past week, Wyoming played Nevada. Um, and, um, you know, for for Wyoming, obviously, that was a huge loss, just losing their um, quarterback. Um, but at, at, the, at the end of the day, I mean, what was the bigger loss was obviously um, losing the game as well. Uh, well, one of them was, a, they were both big losses. I should, I should engage which one was bigger, which one was worse, but... 37-34, our loss in Nevada, and um, and what was was hard was was Wyoming actually scored 18 points in the second quarter uh, or in the fourth quarter. So they, they brought it back. Um, their their kicker was four for four from field goals and two for two for PATs. So he is the actually Mountain West Player of the Week. Um, but uh, also you know Wyoming, uh, a team that has been has is just been incredible at home as well they've they've won uh there were six in oh i believe in their last let's see sorry i had that right up here but they're on a crazy tear at home they rarely lose at home um and i know this will be a big one um for for them as well uh because this will be their, their first home game so there will be fans this time i'm going to be a fan myself I'm just going to be, um, not just, I get to be with my friends, which is really fun. And maybe I'll do some vlogging. Yes, of course, I'll do some vlogging from there. And um, that stadium is about 30,000, you know, seat stadium. It's not a giant stadium. They're going to let 7,000 fans in. And um, that'll be a little bit of uh, atmosphere as well. Apparently, they had 1,000 seats for um, the students that, that got it. Here's one of those big plays right now. You see it right there. Um, some of these these long explosive plays and that touchdown right there so wyoming can do it all on the ground they can do it in the air i mean after fresno you know a lot of us are pretty confident or, or riding kind of high on the offense and what it looked like and 
how um you know how cool and how different and it is i mean having the warrior scheme having um calvin turner take those direct snaps oh look at that they did a timmy a tim tebow um play right there as well uh fake um that's always going to be the tim tebow but wyoming going going into their bag of tricks as well uh clearly they um you know are a team that uh, can deal with very complex movements and um offenses so it's not going to be very easy at all there's going to be there's some there's some there's there's youth on that team but there's also maturity um and the last time hawaii won in laramie was in 1991 31 or uh, 32 to 17 and since then the cowboys have won five straight times and like i said i was there for the last one 2017 josh allen uh the buffalo bills quarterback uh in overtime but hawaii i mean played really strong that game so it's too bad um that that happened um but also two of the four mountain west meetings be between these teams have gone into overtime so there's a very good chance it could go over overtime again uh because in 13 it also went into overtime and i think that 2013 game if i believe one of those games was the game that uh gave up like 800 yards on offense like gave up like that was and still only lost by like uh, very it was a very close game i believe that was the game um like a huge like no defense it was just like score 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 um then you just saw nevada um you know that was how they won in overtime and uh so wyoming is gonna be is gonna be hungry you know that's you know that for sure um but sure, so should uh right uh should be hungry for this game this should be a game that um they take seriously being 2-0 and would be, be be huge because the last two teams um uh you know, or last, ha, ha, would, this would be the fourth tier in a row that the team would start to announce. So, um, a, a two and zero Mountain West start at least. So you got to keep it going for Coach. Um, so this is also weird because we played Fresno last week, which was a conference team. Obviously, this is a weird year in the pandemic and not being able to do the the um, you know all the stuff that we normally want to do in terms of like tailgating in terms of like you know traveling a lot of people aren't you know if you're traveling let me know if you're going to travel to the game i'm actually interested in seeing if, if people are going to travel um because i think uh you know uh, people from hawaii are planning on being there i know that um the people that i'm planning on at least seeing before the game or after the game there are there are a bunch of us so if you're coming uh let us know let us know in the comments or something let us know where you're going to be if you're going to have a flag i'll probably have this flag probably have my hawaiian flag one of my Hawaiian flags usually uh, with me as well, but that'll be a game that's going to be super cold. We already know that, um, but at least Hawaii has a trophy. So Hawaii is the trophy. The last game, uh, I, I previewed it in Hawaii in that one. Um, if you go back and look, uh, and there was Shevin's uh, touchdown pass at the end. So clearly Shevin has some good history with Wyoming, and we want to keep that going as well with Shevin, and he comes back um you know and and does it uh deanne asked how many tickets did they allot for uh i don't think i don't know if they did i i so the tickets that we got or um i know fuchsia got some and i believe a few some of some of the people that i know of that that called they had to call really early in the morning so i don't think they restricted it which is good because there are some places that are excuse me trying to restrict ticket purchases to like regional areas so that you're not mixing in a lot of whatever out of towners um how's it uh you know when when you, when we look at this matchup again uh we look at you know two teams that have been to the mountain west championship game not too long ago mountain west uh, wyoming actually hosted the game and lost to san diego state um and that was the year that they won every game at home and they ended up losing to san diego state and so and i think that was the last time the west actually won the the um, the Mountain West. So Hawaii, obviously, we were the representative last year in Boise, and this year, um, you know, it looks like it's going to be another uh, toss-up again for all the teams. I think that um, looking at how this this year is going, obviously, the fact that we never know if there's going to be a game that week. Sometimes some teams are pausing. I hear there's was it Wisconsin that's pausing. So we're we're totally week to week here, right? We're just trying to just get through this week to week. I don't want to look too far ahead. 
Um, but we're two days away from Wyoming, so we're pretty sure we're going to be able to make this one. Um, but we also have to remember, too, uh, on the flip side, it's going to be a cold game. But what's going for Hawaii, right? What's in our favor uh, is that we've won four straight Mountain West games dating back to last season. And that's actually a school record, too. Uh, and five of the last six Mountain West games. Um, UH is 11 and 22. So not too bad, right? 11 and 22. You would think, okay, that's terrible. But actually 33% on the road is better than 0%. Because sometimes we're like, we're never going to win on the road, right? But if we win one in three times on the road uh, in the Mountain West road games. But that's all time. That's since 2012. So that that's uh, now this is the third coach. This is the third coach that we've had in the Mountain West since we started the Mountain West. By right? Norm Chow being the first. His first game, 2012, was our first Mountain West game. Uh, was that season? Uh, that was uh, another year. That was the year Norm Chow. I thought about this too. I was at the first game of the first ever game for I think most of the coaches. I was there. The last five coaches, because I was there now for Todd Graham's first game, uh, and then I was there for Rolo's first game in Australia, and then Norm Chow's first game. I had we had a Mount, uh, Hawaii Sports Fans Tour. That was a USC. That was at the Coliseum. Um, what was McMackin's first game? I have to go back and check on that one. And um, June Jones also started with USC. I was at that game too. Uh, but you know, this is gonna be a, this is a new era. Obviously, it's it's like when we look at this team, we're like wow, this is almost so different. But a lot of the same faces from last year, and a lot of those 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 players that we had from the previous coaches um, that, that they recruited, that they brought into the program, and that these coaches are being able to help to flourish. And that's a beautiful thing to see as well. And that's, that's something that I noticed right off the bat was just how, um, just observing from the sideline was just how together this team was and how committed they were to um, supporting each other all the time and, and buying in. And that's so important, especially when the, in the Fresno game, when you start off fumbling the kickoff. <laughs> And then giving up a touchdown right away. I mean, Fresno just marched down the field. It was like just taking that first hit in the mouth in the first first round. Literally, you're walking up to your opponent and he, he gets you. Um, so for UH to turn it around like that and to, to take one on the chin early, but also to just bounce back and bounce back strong and to win by two touchdowns. This, this is so huge. Um, but... It's going to be challenging. Back-to-back -back conference games, back-to-back -back conference road games. Um, this is not something that's that's done very often. Um, since joining, actually, in, in 2012, uh, UH has played back-to-back -back conference games, uh, road games, that is, in consecutive weeks three times. And they lost both games in 2012 and in 2015, and they split in 2014. So it's super hard to do that. Um, they have yet to win both. So this will be the first time if they start um, with two wins on the road, it'll be the first time. And uh, that'll also mark the first game in um, at Aloha Stadium, and that's anticipated Hawaii versus New Mexico. I actually have not yet been granted media credentials to that game, so I'm not sure if I'll be in that game. If it happens, it happens. I hope so. I get to vlog. I get to be there. Um, this game against Fresno, as some of you know, is my was my 61st straight game in a row, so I haven't missed a game. I tell people um, December or October 31st, 2012 was the beginning of this, or I haven't missed a game since October 24th, 2012. So um, that was the last game I missed, which was a Nevada game in, in 2015, sorry, 2015. So five years ago, I haven't missed a game, but it could happen this year. And if it happens, it's gonna happen. Uh, Gerard says, is New Mexico gonna play? And New Mexico apparently is gonna play at San Jose this week. So the governor is gonna let them fly to San Jose, but, um, I'm not sure if they're gonna fly to Hawaii. I, I will say, like, we don't know. I, that game, I'm, I'm hosting in Hawaii will be definitely will come with a host of challenges itself in terms of like teams flying in and and wanting to be there, um, you know, or feeling that they're safe. I'm, I'm sure they all want to be there. The teams do, but um, just given some of their leadership at, on the campuses. I know a lot of them would prefer to uh, keep their kids on, at, on school and so or not going all the way to Hawaii. So I'm not saying that's going to happen with New Mexico, but they have pulled the plug obviously once this season. So, you know, who knows? Uh, so we're just going to focus on Wyoming this time. I know I'm even me. I'm, I'm jumping ahead and looking ahead. Uh, but it is exciting because um, you know, we have a new coach, Todd Graham. He, he won his first game ever. It's been it's since Bob Wagner won his first game as the last time a UH coach won his debut. Um, and he actually, Todd Graham, 
because he's been an active coach for such a long time, he actually has 96 career wins already, and that ranks him uh, third behind Wyoming's coach, Craig Bull, and Air Force's coach, Troy Calhoun, uh, as well. So Craig Bull, 140 career victories. So he's been around for a while as well, and he's a guy that um, you know is well-respected around the country and can do a lot. It's like Wyoming, sometimes we forget about them. They're in the mountain side, right? We, we, we know our west side, our west division, um, foes pretty well, Nevada, UNLV, San Jose, Fresno, San Diego. You know, we, we see these, these guys every year. We kind of, we know them, but these mountain people, we don't see them all the time, right? So it's been since 2018. So we took a, a little bit of break from Wyoming and we weren't even supposed to play them. So that's another thing. We weren't even supposed to play them this year. We're supposed to play Air Force this year. That was the one team that we're supposed to play in that region. So that's also a difference this year as well, um, because usually we go Wyoming, we usually go Air Force, uh, Wyoming, Colorado State, right? So we play those three mountains, and we kind of rotate through those that area. Um, so this year was supposed to be finally the year that UH plays at Air Force, and I say finally because a lot of people look forward to that. There's a lot of Hawaii transplants in, transplants in Colorado Springs, and a lot of people like going to Colorado Springs as well um, because it's you know it's fun and. I know Fuchsia's looking forward to climbing a mountain, Manitou climb, so that's what she's going to be doing on Sunday, or on Saturday, on, on Halloween. So this game is not on Halloween, actually, right? It's the day before Halloween, so you get to have your Halloween celebrations, whatever your Halloween celebrations are going to look like this year, because it's probably going to be a little bit different than normal. But hopefully our Halloween celebrations include celebrating a Hawaii victory, um, because, you know, Chevin Cordero, when we talk about him, he's 5-0 and as a starter, 5-0. and Every game that he started, he's won. Which is really amazing and, and, and impressive to do, uh, considering it's has been over. This is the third season, right? So he's been a starter. He's gotten to start in 2018, 2019, and now 2020. Now, obviously, without Cole McDonald being there, Chevin is installed as the number one starter. Um, and I'm not going to bring this up again, but I talked about this even from last year and the Chevin and Cole using two quarterbacks. I don't think that was a big deal personally. I think that I think the role did it the way that he was. Um, that he, he used both quarterbacks to the best of their abilities and, and for the team's benefit. Um, but I will say it is nice, you know, this year having when we have, you know, a, a, a person that is already the established starter, established leader, um, and a guy like Calvin, who has played quarterback before, who, who comes in as someone as a, as a running back, but can also take the ball from under center. I think it's, it's awesome. I mean, this is uh, really. Um, and I, I, a lot of this goes back um, to Coach Graham and you know what he's built over these years and his break and uh, being able to mix in the youth and the youth of his staff um, with with veteran. I mean, this is a guy clearly, Coach Graham, that um, you know there's no learning curve really. I mean, there might be a learning curve when it comes to being in Hawaii because obviously when we talk about being in Hawaii, it's different, right? There's no place else like Hawaii, and you have to. You have to adapt to us and you have to learn because this is culturally just like you go anywhere right i'm sure coaching at wyoming there's a learning curve there's a cultural difference between being there a lot of places but hawaii we have our own uh unique idiosyncrasies and also um just this really uh you know fabulous um parts of hawaii and the place that we live in that makes it amazing as well so culturally i think Hawaii is a great place and coach graham has been able and and auntie penny have been able to really um, enmesh themselves so far with our culture and and um, just clearly make a splash right away. So one game only. I don't want to go too far, of course. Only be one game. Not that I would turn on, on coach after another game, but I, I mean, I think uh, right away it's it, it's really impressive just because there was no spring. I mean, most of what the coaches had to do was over Zoom. I mean, just, just all that they had to accomplish and to be able to get on the field and uh, run the offense that effectively uh, 323 yards on the ground. I mean, we can't, I mean, we keep going back to that stat because we're like, oh, Hawaii, we're pass happy, right? Since 1999, all we've been talking about is we're a pass, 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 pass. And now that, you know, we have all these rushing yards, it's kind of cool, actually. It's kind of fun. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that uh, more of us will be able to appreciate um you know just how um, nice it is to have somebody come in right away because it was difficult. I mean, with Rolo leaving, let's be honest. I mean, it looked like there we could have it could go bad, and I'm not saying it, it still couldn't, but I feel pretty confident. I will say 
Um, Gerard also says, also thought the coaches made great adjustments. He also says, love the decisions Shevin made could see the maturity. Yes, absolutely. You see the maturity every year too. That's the thing. And Shevin, he did a good job of like, just kind of waiting, waiting in that pocket. Just kind of, it was time to break. Okay, you break. Clearly, you know, he has that option. In the offense, that's, I believe, always an option for the quarterback is to, to um, a valid option is to run. Um, and clearly, uh, Shevin has the ability and he can do that. Sean says, I'm going to make it out to Laramie one of these years. Sean, right now, Sean. Come on, get on that plane, Sean. Tomorrow, direct to Denver. If you fly to Denver, so Denver is like the closest major airport to Laramie, Wyoming. So if you fly to Denver, you can drive to Wyoming. So that's a good place. Um, Gerard also says, uh, Shevin threw the ball away when he had to as well. Yes, and that is a sign of his maturity as well. And I think, you know, a lot of what, what Shevin, a lot of the criticism that he received, a lot of it, I don't... Yeah, it was unfair because he really had hardly any time to be in there, get in the game to show what he had. And he'd, he'd, be, he'd be brought in, in in circumstances that were difficult. I thought last year when he played the entire San Jose game and Cole was benched, I mean, that was a huge time for Shevin and took a lot of, you know, cojones for uh, Rolovich to do that. Even though I thought that was the right decision at the time, I thought it was the right decision. I was super sick that game too. I remember I was so sick that game. Uh, I had like a... Yeah, that was bad. But I remember eking it out, right? We won like 42-40. And um, that was against San Jose last year, Shevin's first starting. So game where he had to go the whole game, complete game. Uh, Fuchsia says, at work, just say hi real quick. See you all in there, me. Poke is greater than pokes. <laughs> Poke and pokes. Yeah, we talked about that. Um, Timmy says, won't make it to Laramie, but highly considered being highly considering being in Carson for SDSU in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so... Hawaii is supposed to is scheduled to play San Diego State in Carson, actually, which is way north. Carson is in LA, obviously. If you know LA and Southern California and San Diego is not LA. It's actually about two hours south of LA. Um, that just depends on how the traffic is and how you drive. So for some people, they're like, nah, it's an hour, but not me, I drive slow. Um, but yes, yeah, Shevin accounting for all of those rushing yards as well. And did you know that 323 yards against um, Fresno was actually the most that UH has gone for since going for 344 yards in a home win against Nevada in 2016. And that was a big win in 2016 because that was Rolo, um, you know, playing his old team for the first time. So that was a big win. And 2016, another a great year. I love that year, Rolo's first year, seven and seven um, and winning the bowl game. But uh, what was cool about this rushing performance too is I had 200 yard rushers, had Cordero and Miles Reed both going for a hundred yards, over a hundred yards. I mean. That is just uh, really incredible. Um, and also the takeaways, um, three interceptions in a game. Wow, three interceptions. That's the first time since they had three interceptions at San Jose, also in 2016, Rolo's first year. So a lot of similarities, which is crazy because also in 2016, when UH played UT Martin at home, they had four takeaways, which is the same they had this year. So, ooh, that's a, that's a, that's interesting, all of these uh, these uh similarities to 2016 uh rolo's first year and i think uh coach graham is already setting himself uh, is sh showing how he is different i think a lot of people would come in with the feeling like oh i hope he just builds on what rolo did right i hope he just adds to it and i think in a lot of ways he did he clearly is putting guys in positions where they can succeed um and he's playing to their strengths and he's playing you know as much as he can i'm sure to their terminology but at the same time he he has uh deliberately made adjustments to the schemes to uh you know uh pre-snap motion and things that are different right that you see obviously all the direct snaps to calvin i mean that's different as well um so it's crazy but thanks for all the question guys if you go back uh and you and you watched it from the beginning you know i had that vlog the santa the the fresno vlog so i'm definitely gonna have that uh, up again, maybe I'll play that one more time on the way out of the show. But uh, I think that uh, this has been, um, you know, one of those seasons so far that we didn't expect much, right? We just wanted it to happen, and it is happening so far, and it's happening so well so far for us that we're just like, oh, uh, is this real life? Um, it is crazy. Uh, but Carson, California, everybody's asking about Carson. If there's a game in Carson, Cisco says, Cisco, who does live um, in Southern California, in LA, 
He says, if there is a game in Carson, I will have an area designated for a tailgate around the corner from the stadium. Ooh. So look out for that. Cisco says that. Gerard says, do you know if they'll allow seniors another year? Just asking because we have some good transfers like Calvin and Bussin. Yes, they are. And Gerard, it's a blanket. Um, and what Gerard is talking about is uh, eligibility, right? So this year, all football, NCAA blanket wavered all of the players for another year of eligibility so this is basically a free year now when the current high school seniors come next year that's going to be a tough one because what are the requirements going to be on the roster and um what are the um i mean some players will probably leave but players are going to get cut i mean they're not going to just bring in a whole new class and be like okay you guys can now have 120 players like that's not going to happen um Plus, you have to pay for all of these scholarships. I mean, that is difficult enough. That is a part that, you know, we don't talk about enough as well is the fact that, you know, a lot of the money that goes into the scholarships, when when you just, and, and I believe these students deserve to be able to come back, especially if their, their seasons are, are altered in such a way, right? I mean, last year, the volleyball team, men's volleyball, I mean, they basically got through an entire regular season and they're going to get another full year. So... That is going to be tough, I think, because it's hard to bring in. It's hard to work in new freshmen when you have the same seniors. You have seniors, like super seniors, which is crazy. Super seniors. Do you ever use that? I remember in college, people would use that for the kids that were there for a fifth year. They were the super seniors. Uh, but yeah, good question. Thanks, Gerard. Gerard's asking some good questions and giving some good comments. But uh, no, Wyoming, Wyomina. Maybe we'll say that. Say Wyomina every time, right? Just like Beretania, 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 right? Is Britain, right? That's just a Hawaiianized version, right? Of of uh, Anglican word, right? English word like Britain, and we just say Beretania. So um, that's how you get Wyomina. But that song Wyomina, something that's so fun, something that um, you know has a good story behind it, and the story of Equal Purdy who won national rodeo competition in 1908 this brown boy from hawaii went all the way from big island to cheyenne wyoming and won the national crown and that song uh and a bunch of his friends were there as well and all placed as well so that's that's where that trophy is uh in his image equal party the paniolo trophy uh is uh you know Wyoming is 14 and 10 in all time. So, uh, but right now, Hawaii wants to get that trophy back. It's been a pretty good show. I'm, uh, if anybody has any other questions, um, I would love to, uh, you know, answer them while we have some, uh, some time. And a lot of you, please like us on, you know, I'm, I'm noticing a lot of YouTube, uh, YouTubers, YouTube subscribers. So if you're on YouTube, please subscribe, please, please, please subscribe. Um, that's Hawaii sports fans. If you are, um, you know, on, on Instagram at HI sports fans on Twitter at HI sports fans, please do that as much as you can do. I love the support. Um, it helps to show that a lot of you are supportive. You know, everything that I do here, I don't get paid for it. You know, every, this, this is all of my own creation and something that I really enjoy. I mean, something that I think about all the time. And from when I was a kid, I thought about all these things, right? About going to games, about talking about games, about fake talking about games, about fake writing about games. And, um, you know, I grew up to be able to real do those things. So uh, something that I take very serious, but also something that um, I have to grow. And obviously this brand, Hawaii Sports Fans, uh, some of you just, you know, know of me as a travel company. I take people to Super Bowls. I don't just take people, five Super Bowls. We went to five Super Bowls. Uh, in Super Bowl uh, 55 coming up in Tampa. Let's make it our sixth. Hopefully, I know that they're going to put a restriction amount of people in Super Bowl, but I've been to the last five, so I got to be in there uh, for this next Super Bowl as well. Or well, five of the last six. We actually skipped Super Bowl 51. We started Super Bowl 49, uh, saw the Seahawks blow it on the end zone, and that was our that began the first Super Bowl tour of Hawaii sports fans, and then uh, Super Bowl 50, uh, 52 in minnesota 53 in atlanta and last year 54 to see the chiefs finally win after 50 years and for me as a chiefs fan since 1989 it was amazing to see but we've never had a hawaii sports fans tour to wyoming so maybe i have to do that uh eventually uh eventually whenever we have sports tours again um 
But in any case, it's been a, an incredible year so far, and I, I, I definitely can be accused of, of overstating it because, um, for sure, the game, the year has just started. But I, I'm blown away that we got to this point, that we had a game, that we managed to get through a game, that we won, um, that I was there for my 61st game. I'm gonna be there for my 67th straight game, and that could be the last one. I don't know if I'm gonna get into a lot of stadium. I don't know if I'll get into any of the other stadiums for the rest of the year with that, at that point. So I've just been really fortunate so far to be able to do this. And um, if the streak is over, then it's over, I guess. Um, it's really, you know, something that uh, is fun. But you know, I, I think that I uh, I've I've have so many memories and great, you know, pleasure that I've taken five years of travel from Australia straight to Michigan, all kinds of crazy places that we've done. Uh, Gerard says, hopefully they play like they did in Reno last year. Yes, 54 to three win last year. You know, that was impressive, but it's been a great year. Uh, that Fresno came was awesome. So good that I'm, I'm definitely want to, uh, play for you that video again. I can't to play for you. Wyomina is like the hula. We're going to think about Wyoming. We're going to think about this beautiful hula. Uh, from my classmate Velo, this was just crazy, my, from high school, uh, dancing about uh, a story about our other two classmates, great-grandfathers, one of them, Iquo Purdy, the other one, Archie Ka'awa, also talked about in that song. So, just really cool Hawaiian history um, in within this story, within the story of this game, within the story of the trophy, and that's something that I think we should all remember and all think about and the, the powerful story of these Hawaiian men in 1908 who were so audacious that they would fly all the way to Cheyenne, Wyoming and compete against these cowboys who thought that these kids from the island could never compete with them. But he cool pretty won. So remember that. And that's it for this edition of the Wayne Cueto Show. See you next time.